hand loaders, bullet casters, welcome back to my bench. I am excited today because I have got for you this Ruger Blackhawk single action revolver that we're going to discuss the barrel cylinder gap. I also got a little something extra here. I'm super excited. I just received this bullet mold and I can't wait to tell you about it. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it and what I plan to do with it at the end of the video. But stick with me because I got a lot of great stuff coming up for you. I absolutely have here for you today a firearm that I thoroughly enjoy. Behold the Ruger single action Blackhawk 4 and 5 8 inch barrel, 6 rounds. This firearm is not chambered in 44, guys. I know you're surprised. Hey, Led Smith, I thought you were a 44 guy. I am. But to tell you the truth, I'm really kind of a big bullet guy. I just like large bullets. And <laughs> come on, guys, settle down. And I've selected this gun because I'm a huge fan of the M1911 and the 45 ACP. And this firearm will shoot both the 45 ACP and also the classic 45 Colt. It just requires a little cylinder swap. Okay, but I'm continuing on with our lesson on bullet path. And our next section that we have to reckon with is this barrel cylinder gap. What is this barrel cylinder gap? It is nothing. It is dead, empty space. It occupies the territory between the barrel and between the cylinder. Now, for some of you folks that are steeped in Appalachian American history, this might sound familiar to you because there was a state, and there is a state, that used to be commonly referred to as the space between Virginia and South Carolina. Can you guess what that is? Yes, North Carolina folks. Why they refused to say the name, I don't know. I think they were jealous of the corn liquor that they had in North Carolina. I mean, who else makes it like they do? But we're not talking about corn liquor. We're talking about the space between the cylinder and the barrel. Now, it means a lot to us. Only... If it gives us problems, if it's not giving us problems, it really doesn't mean a whole lot. That space needs to be large enough so that there is room for this cylinder to rotate. If the space is too small, it's going to bind up against the barrel. If the space is too large, we're going to drop pressures. Low end loads might start looking a lot like squib loads. Uh, guys, I, I don't know for a fact. But I have heard, and I would like to hear from you guys, if maybe some of you are experienced with it, but I have heard that leading can happen from too much cylinder gap. And I guess it kind of makes sense why, because the longer you expose that lead base to this unconfined area, this space between the cylinder and the barrel, the space that is the namesake of North Carolina. <laughs> okay, I'll stop picking on North Carolina. I like North Carolina. Then it kind of makes sense that some letting might happen. I've not encountered this one myself, folks. If you have, I would love to hear about it. Just throw me something down there in the comments because I'd like to hear your story about it. So what I do know is that space needs to be within a specification that the manufacturer sets it to. And this kind of means there's not one spec. Every manufacturer seems to have their idea of what it ought to be. Now here's what it means to us folks. Nothing, as long as it works. Now, if we understand this space exists, then we also understand that this cylinder and this barrel are not one solid piece. So, just so that everybody's on the same page here, and we know 
this firearm is unloaded. This is the first time I think I've actually depicted a fully functioning firearm on my bench. They've always been taken apart because I'm doing some kind of measuring. And uh, this one here is ready to go hot. All it needs is a round tossed into the chamber. Now, I've picked a single action because of its simplicity. And there's going to be some things that help us understand how critical this is not necessary, folks. <laughs> there's going to be some things that help us understand what becomes critical. Now, the space, as long as everything's working fine with our revolver, um, really all it does is represent that we're dealing with two separate parts. And what we want is for these two parts to function like one. So one shop builds a barrel, another shop builds a frame, another shop builds a cylinder, another shop builds all the little inner workings and clockwork, and they come together and they get built and assembled by one person, maybe a few, and we can only hope that everything is in 100% perfect alignment unfortunately guys with our production revolvers you know the ones we like because us that actually work for a living can afford them i say that but even these revolvers are a little bit high in price yet they're still production and if these revolvers have cylinders that aren't in perfect alignment with their bore that can cause us problems and I'm going to show you an up close of what this will look like. Now, as you can see here, I've got this Blackhawk chalked up and again in some soft jaws in the big mean orange vise. And I know some of you are squeamish about seeing a firearm pointed in your direction, even on a, even on a video screen. And I understand that. But I certainly hope that you understood that the firearm was unloaded so we're looking at this muzzle end and you're gonna see shortly the reason why I opted for this single action because it's gonna make life a whole lot easier getting a camera image of this rotating cylinder you just can't really do this that easily with a with a double action revolver that little loading gate once you open it up on the Ruger Blackhawks, you're able to rotate that cylinder. I'm going to bring you in for this close-up here. And I'm really pretty impressed with how well this camera is picking up some of this detail. I mean, granted, this is a pretty big bore. 45, that's nothing to scoff about, folks. Some folks can stick a pinky in there. I don't recommend it. But if you look closely... You can see right there where the firing pin channel is. That gives you some pretty good perspective of where we're at. So we also know that the throat and the cylinder is also in alignment with this bore. Now, we can look around the edge here. And we can see there's not really much of a ridge. Maybe there is. It, it's just not good enough of a camera to pick up that great a detail. But I can show you what it will look like. <laughs> that helps, doesn't it? But I can show you what it will look like when it's not. So with this little bit of movement right here, you can probably pretty well see the throat. And... The throat is pretty well in alignment at this point, but what if in full lockup when that hammer drops, I'm right there? Well, that means that my bullet is favoring this side of the barrel. What if it's right there? And again, my bullet's favoring this side of the barrel. Now, what I want is 100% perfect alignment. Am I going to get that out of a production gun? Yeah, sometimes. 
a lot of times not. Is this going to be a problem for most of us when we're shooting uh, jacketed bullets? No, not really, unless it's excessive. But if we are canted far enough, whether we're shooting jacketed or cast lead bullets, we're going to start stripping bullet material off. And when we do that, it can be pretty painful when it blows back and hits you in the face. It can also really upset the guy in the lane next to you because he might be getting pelted too. So I bring up this cylinder gap more because of what it represents to us as a potential alignment issue. And there are some things manufacturers have done and built into these firearms to help resolve problems in this area because guys they're going to exist unless we're buying top end custom revolvers that have been worked over by hand and hand fitted we're, we're probably going to have problems here as far as alignment but not always so let's not make a bigger deal of it than it needs to be if it's shooting fine if you're not building up mounds of lead there in the forcing cone, you're probably in good shape. So back to this drawing, once again, the space between <laughs> the throat and the barrel, the barrel cylinder gap. As long as it works, don't sweat it. There's probably not an issue, but if, excuse me, but if there is, I promise you, when you get to shooting cast bullets, your gun's going to let you know about it. And we're going to follow up on this issue in our next video where we discuss this forcing cone, what it means to us, and how it helps us in these areas if, in fact, we're not in perfect alignment. So folks, this is the new brass mold that I just received from Arsenal. It is a 312-145 lead round nose flat point. <laughs> Something called Elvis, which I believe there is a YouTuber out there named Elvis Ammo or something. And I think he had something to do with developing this mold. He wanted it for the blackout. Possibly 762 by 39. I have a little bit different plans for it. And I'm looking forward to sharing my results with you. It's going to be a little bit probably before I'm able to do any kind of casting with it. But I've got a bit of a challenge. I need to cast for a 762 by 39 bolt action rifle. Yes, that is a CZ, if you're familiar with that. And they are a beauty. This is her right here. The CZ527 chambered in a 762 by 39. A lot of people call it Russian. Usually ends with an R. But if I am correct, I believe that R actually represents the word rimmed <laughs> i'm not sure it uh seems like that's what i read once and of course if you read it it's got to be true right so anyways i'm not doing a video on this anytime soon but i'm thoroughly looking forward to documenting my efforts using this mold and this rifle and I'm hoping you'll be a part of that with me. The only reason I went with Arsenal is because they provided a bullet that has a promising diameter of .314. Which is awful big for this caliber. But you know what? That's what my throat is. And my groove diameter is about a .313. So it's got to be a big bullet, folks. Otherwise, what happens? The gas will get in front of the bullet. Which means the lead won't stay inside the bullet. So folks, like and subscribe. And we're going to dive right into the forcing cone and through the muzzle before you know it. Thank you.